guys, what's up? So, uh, I decided to move my uh, servers to a colo and uh, data center, a place called Century Lake in Irvine. Yeah, I was just having too many uh, power outages here, man. So, yeah, even though I actually, if you see my other videos, I have tons of battery backups and generators. But, you know, sometimes when I'm on sites, you know, doing work, and the power goes out here for an extended period of time, it's like my email's down, phone system's down, everything's down. So, I decided just to move these things into a co lower data center. So, um, so one of the issues is, is that I'm going to move all, just about all my servers, phone system, email server, web servers, everything over. And um, the issue is uh, I still need to actually keep a file server here because I don't want to be sending files back and forth uh, over the internet to the, to the colo. Um, some of the files I need direct access to, uh, they're pretty large files, so I'm just going to build like a small, um, you know, not really, it's going to be a Windows-based uh, network attached storage. I mean, I've done free, free NAS boxes and everything like that, but um, since I actually run like a lot of Windows applications, I'm just going to make it out of a uh, Windows uh, 2012 R2. But yeah, I'm actually going to use my, uh, open this case up here, that's a Cisco gigabit switch, PoE, but um, I'm going to use that, uh, it's actually, it's currently running as my firewall. Um, in my last video I built a Sophos XG, but I'm actually going to take the server and reuse it again and turn it into my, uh, file server. Um, I'm going to use a, an external, uh, uh, serial ATA, uh, box because there's really only two spots for drives in this small server. But what I'm looking for is something really energy efficient. And in the last video I showed you, this is a very tiny server. I don't know if you can see that, but it's only 16 inches deep. And I'm actually going to be moving this whole rack out. So, um, but if you look up there, I have a small original telco rack that I had in this garage here. Um, and so I'm going to move the server back up there, or at least the, this Dell R210 up there, and it's going to fit in that small rack. So I don't need to have all my servers in their crap here anymore because it's going to be all in the colo. So, um, but I do need actually a local file server you know, for my videos and, you know, file, working files and, you know, counting stuff and, um, but yeah, I'm going to pull this out and reprovision it as a file server. I'm going to do a RAM upgrade and, uh, I'll show you my external, uh, you know, serial, serial ATA enclosure. So, cool, I'm going to get this out and I'll show you how I do it. Alright, so I moved my, uh, shut down my Dell RC10 and I actually put the, hooked up to my, um, backup uh, firewall here. It's a HP DL360G5. Um, currently my uh, file server is running here and actually I had a bad drive so that's one of my... Uh, so I have, I have a RAID 1 mirror and that's actually my VMware drives and then I have a... This really, these, these are my, my business files. It's a RAID 1 mirror here. And then I have just regular uh, just uh, single drives here. Just uh, like non-critical stuff. You know videos and music and whatever. Um, but VMware is not the best for a file server. Um, it doesn't give you true ac. Well, it, it does kind of, but it's, it's kind of weird. You have to get it's a to get with 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 a Windows Hyper V. You can get direct access to your hard drive. Whereas with uh, VMware, you have to create like a bunch of shortcuts, and it's kind of a pain in the ass. So um, if you're going to be running a file server, I don't really recommend like VMware, even though it does work and it's been working for me. But what I've noticed is when you have a failed drive, sometimes you know, when you're running a file server and you have direct access and, you know, symbolic links created, it, I've actually had to lock up the VMware server, so, um, probably wouldn't do that again, you know, I mean, that, you know, lesson learned, it's not the best for a file server, but, uh, I was trying to reduce the cost of power here, you know, like, not trying to save, you know, <laughs> trying to build things as energy efficient as possible, but, Alright, so what I use, I, I gotta pull up my uh, data drives here. I'm gonna keep these in here. These are running like, you know, I've exchanged in a couple different virtual machines, but uh, I think I'm running like four or five virtual machines on this server. Um, I used to run Microsoft Link, but got sick of that. But, um, so I'm gonna get those drives out, and then I have a server down below, and this is kind of like my, um, this runs more of my Linux based stuff, uh, Cisco uh, testing uh, server. And I also have uh, my web server on here, CRM's on here. Uh, just pretty much all my Linux based stuff's on this server here. Alright, cool, so. Get this going.
Okay, so here's the server unmounted. Um, in the last video, uh, I mean, this thing only has 4 gig of RAM in it right now. Um, because, I mean, I was running a Linux-based uh, firewall OS. So, now that I'm, I'm going to be installing Windows on it, I'm going to put a lot more RAM in here. So, I went over to Micro Center this morning, and uh, this was on sale for 50 bucks. It's uh, two, It's 16 gigs of RAM, um, two 8 gig sticks. I mean, that's probably, I could probably get away with 8. You know, it's just a file server. It's not a domain controller or nothing, so... Um, but yeah, it's got 16 for 50 bucks, and then this is the uh, external, uh, you know, S serial ATA uh, driver right here. This was a, uh, on it was on sale for 89 dollars, but it holds uh, four drives, uh, so that, that should be good for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have uh, two of my my file drives, a media drive, then I'll have a backup drive, which creates a, a server image of that on an external drive there, but. Uh, Never mess with the external serial A8. I've always actually had regular servers with internal drives, so. Um, yeah, I just wanted something that was energy efficient at the house, that could fit in that little rack up there. So. Alright, I guess we'll see. It's also a USB 3.0, too. But, uh, alright, cool. So I'm gonna get the server going, and, uh, I guess another one of the benefits I, I do like about the server is it has dual NICs. So I guess I can do, like, NIC teaming for performance. You know, basically, uh, I have a gigabit switch, so in theory, if you had two, in full duplex, a one gig, uh, Nick could do, uh, two, uh, gigabits. So in theory, I could actually have four gigs of, uh, throughput on this, but, I mean, it's hard, I mean, I guess you gotta test it, but you don't really know for sure, it's, you know, in theory, that's what it's supposed to get, but you never know, but, uh, alright, so I'm gonna get this, uh, RAM upgrade here. Let's cover off, and this is the RAM. Pull these old that ones out. DDR3 RAM. And, uh, and these are uh, one gig stick Samsung, looks like. Alright, so I'm gonna get this uh, ballistics in there and uh, get it going. It's in there, and uh, sometimes you gotta put them in uh, separate banks, but yeah, I've actually, the Dell R710s, since they have so many freaking memory banks, I mean, I've had it actually take me an hour to get the right configuration with memory sticks. It's a pretty crazy server. Like the Dell R710 was designed for VMware or Hyper-V, so virtualization. But uh, let's see if I can get this fired up and maybe this will uh, go out. So, anyway, I'm going to be using the actual onboard chipset to do uh, RAID calculations. It's actually not, even though it's it's not considered real hardware RAID, you know. I'm going to get a sec. They're real hardware RAID. It's uh, it's considered software RAID. And this is actually a real hardware rate controller here, where you actually have onboard cache memory, battery backup. Um, I mean, this, if this was a database server, you know, like a SQL server or some kind of database server, then I'd probably do hardware RAID. Uh, but this is just a file server, so it's not it's not really mission critical, critical to me. So it's it's not that big of a deal to me. So um, I'll get the RAID containers uh, configured, but I'm still running the uh, the 60 gigabit or uh, 60 gigabyte. Uh, Solid state drive there for the OS. So, yeah. All right, cool. Now go on the RAM. Um, sometimes actually these will work on these like lower end Dell servers, like the non ECC memory. But uh, this time it didn't. And I tried multiple different pairs. I have different DDR RAM, and uh, none of these would work. So yeah, sometimes these Dell servers can be a little bit picky with the RAM. Um, they're, sometimes they're really specific on what they want. You know, the, the speed of the memory, ECC, ECC registered. Um, but I mean, this is not going to stop my build. At least I'll get it going with 4 gig of RAM, get the OS installed, get all the Windows updates done. So um, I might take some RAM out of one of my other servers and, and put it in there, you know, see what's up. But uh, yeah, because I want at least 8 gig of RAM. I mean, that would be the minimum I'd put, I'd put in this thing. So, all right, cool. I'm going to boot this thing with uh, 4 gig and install Windows 2003. I'm uh, booting from a uh, little uh, 8 gig USB stick here. And because of the uh, Windows 2012 R2 installation process. Do the installation and should be done here in a couple seconds. Well, maybe uh, since it doesn't have very much RAM in it. I mean, the hard drive is fast, the solid state drive is fast. The processor is not that fast, but yeah, it doesn't need to be for a file server. Guys, okay, got Windows 2012 installed and it's doing all the updates. My VMware uh, 
server decommissioned, uh, at least the file server portion of it, and uh, here's the external serial ATA RAID. It's a Vantech, uh, but the hot swap drive cages here. I don't know if you can see that, hopefully, it's, it's just comes over. Just come up and you screw the hard drives in there. So I have four hard drives I gotta put in this thing. And uh, here they are. I got an extra one too. But I guess I'm, what I'm trying to figure out is uh, what's better, external serial ETA or USB 3? I don't know, I guess I could do either or. So it has both of them right there. So, Alright, I'm gonna get those drives loaded in there and uh, recreate the shares and uh, get everything going. Cool. Alright, so this is the first time I fired this thing up. It's connected with this external uh, serial ATA cable and uh, plug into power. And there's my test monitor. I mean, this is not, I'm not going to have a monitor connected to it. It's going to be a headless system. But, uh, I mean, it's going to be pretty far up in the rack. So, uh, I mean, I never use like, normally external serial ATA. I normally use servers for everything, so I don't really know what to expect. I'm assuming this is, well, it said this is hot swappable and plug and play, so. Okay, this is firing on. Put three drives in there for now. My, my mirror is, uh, gotta make sure I, uh, see what happens with this thing, uh, the mirror here. But, uh, before I put the mirror in there, you know. So, it's possible that I have to reboot the server. Kind of cool. The lights and stuff, you know. Yeah, actually, move that light so you can. It's too much light there. Hmm. Really cool. Well, I, mean, I guess we'll see right now if it detected. So let's go to Windows. I mean, I might have to reboot this thing. I mean. Like I said, I'm not familiar with the uh, external serial ATA, so... Um, yeah, I guess I could have just sent a NAS, but the thing is, I need to actually run, like, uh, certain Windows applications for the uh, on a file server. Okay. So, it's these OneDrive. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Yeah, detected the primary drive. I wonder why I didn't detect these other two drives. Weird. All right, so. Hmm. So yeah, maybe I'll reboot this thing and see if it rescans and uh, see these other two two drives come up. I'm gonna put a drive. Maybe it's because I have a drive. I don't have a drive in one. I have a drive in one and then three and four. Because it, actually, the drive two is gonna be my uh, RAID one array. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mirror these two drives, and these are just gonna be individual drives. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of a cool thing here. You can see like the activity on it, you know, on each drive. So, all right, so I'm gonna reboot this thing real quick and see if I can see these new drives. All right, cool. This server is uh, pretty picky with its memory. Uh, I went to the store and got some ECC memory, and this shit doesn't even work. Um, that's fine because the Dell Art 210 server, which is the previous version, you could pretty much put any kind of memory you wanted in there. It didn't make a difference. ECC, non-ECC. You had to fire right up. Whereas this one is, I tried like uh, like ten different brands of memory on this thing already, just from different computers. You know, memory I have laying up here, and uh, fuck, I can get this thing to fire up. So I'm gonna have to order the stuff online, I guess. But uh, another thing, issue I ran into last night, and uh, was that uh, this previous chipset, uh, the R210 and the R210 two are different. They have diff different chipsets, whereas. The external serial ATA, serial ATA controller can only support one drive, external drive. Um, the newer version, the R10 II, can support the multiple drives chain. So I had to buy this uh, over at Micro Center. It's a, about a $22 card. It's a PCI Express, but it's gonna should, should be able to give me, uh, you know, be able to recognize all four of the drives in this array right here. But uh, all right, so that's that's so annoying with the memory, man. It's crazy. So. Yeah, it's really picky about the memory. All right, and I guess we'll see if this thing uh, detects all the drives.
So we'll see. All right. Gets all the drives, and now these things are all lit up. And now it's going to go into Windows, and hopefully it sees the uh, BIOS, or I mean, sees the uh, new card and loads the drivers automatically because this thing didn't come with the drivers. So I'm assuming the Windows will plug it. Well, hopefully, I mean, plug and play, but. Um, I guess worst case scenario, I have to go to their website and download the drivers, but it should be pretty basic. There's actually some benefits of having these external drives like this. Um, I mean, also, I mean, if this thing fails, I'm out too, but you know, if this server fails for any reason, then because this thing is also USB, I can quickly uh, plug this into my workstation and get to all my files. So that's pretty cool. But uh, Alright, so I'm going to let this thing fire up into Windows and uh, test it and then rack it. Cool. I this thing to get recognized in Windows. Total pain in the ass. It's, uh, I probably wouldn't get this card if, uh, if you guys were thinking about getting this card because um, it came with no manual, no drivers, and uh, even the drivers from their website were old and didn't work. So I actually had to get drivers from Asus uh, because they actually put this chip on some of their motherboards. Uh, the the Asmedia chip that comes on the, on the device. And I had to install about four different driver versions to make it work, so... Yeah, probably I'd probably get like a um, Vantech, some kind of silicon image chip if I had to do this again. So I think it was 22 bucks, but it was just uh, so there. All my drives are showed up now uh, in Windows there. So now I can recreate the shares and uh, rack this thing. All right, cool. Guys, there it is. I have the uh, file server in there. You can see the little Dell RT10 in there. An the external serial HDA device. Um, sorry, phone was ringing. Uh, then my uh, Cisco access point. So all those wires are going to be cleaned up once I get the uh, ASA moved up there. But the cool thing about a Cisco uh, ASA 5510 is that it actually has two PoE ports built into it. So um, that can power a phone and the AP. Or two, two IP phones or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna move this up there on the top, and then I'm gonna have an end-to-end -end IPsec tunnel between here and the colo, so I can just basically communicate with the servers without having to, you know, encrypted, without having to log into like a VPN client. It's just gonna be an always-on tunnel. But uh, cool. Now I gotta move all these servers out of here, man. Ah. I mean, even with VMware, man, it still costs like $180 a month in power. So you know, a couple servers running them, and don't know, but. All right, cool. Hope you enjoyed this video, but uh, I'll keep you guys updated when I move over to uh, CenturyLink. Um, create the VPN tunnel, get some communication. So I'm going to be having an email server, IP phone system, uh, web server, all my stuff there. So like when you go to fintechcommunications.com, it's actually going to this server right now. So um, let me get that going. But uh, yeah, actually, I used to have a pretty large office, but I had to uh, close it down. I had some, like, uh, family illness issues I had to deal with. But, uh, so I'm only working, like, part-time right now. But, uh, so I used to have a pretty nice, cool office, but now it's back in my garage again. So, at least I can, I can figure out what I'm going to do here. But, uh, all right, cool. So I'm going to move these to Colo. Cool, thanks.